in Winthrop. Uh, my name is Julia Wallers. I'm the chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee here in town and also Precinct 2 resident. I'm Joe Domolovitz. I'm the Assistant Town Manager in town. And we're here this afternoon to give you a brief update on a couple of exciting things that are happening in the transportation realm here in town. So not just with regards to how people are able to get around in Winthrop, but what that experience is like and things that are happening to improve that experience for everyone. Um, so namely, we have two uh, fairly brief and succinct updates for you regarding first the what's known as the Better Bus Project that the MBTA is launching. It's underway currently. Um, and secondly, uh, the launch of a new dockless bike share program here in Winthrop. So we will just start, I'll start with give you an overview of the Better Bus Project and then um, I'll hand it over to Joe to tell you a little about the dockless bikes. And uh, first, just as a, a a brief background, uh, the Transportation Committee has been around for almost two years now and when we were first formed, it was made very clear to us that our priority should be the buses because our Winthrop buses, which had been operated um, by Paul Revere Bus Company, a private company, those familiar blue and white buses uh, for over 30 years, 35 years, we're in the process, the MBTA was in the process of uh, putting out an RFP to select a new vendor, uh, possibly a new vendor to run that bus service and to bring the Winthrop bus service more uh, into the system, into the MBTA system. So that was our first priority and naturally we jumped in and started looking at how can we make the service better? What about changing routes? We've had the same routes for decades. How can we change the schedules? All these improvements, but and this was in 20, uh, 2016, I believe, we were told, hold on, the T is about to launch uh, something. It wasn't called the Better Bus Project yet, but we knew that they were going to be launching a process to really analyze all of the routes in the system and do extensive public outreach to make some of the changes that we were suggesting right from the get-go. So we have been waiting for this opportunity and time um, for a long time. We're very excited and I want to take this opportunity to share with you how you as a Winthrop resident who takes the bus, doesn't take the bus, or maybe wish that you could take the bus if it was better, how you can have, uh, have a say in how that happens. So we have uh, some slides. We'll go ahead and launch into that for you. Visuals are always always helpful. Um, so just to give you an overview, the Better Bus Project is looking at not just the Winthrop buses, but the whole bus network. And we are very fortunate as a small seaside town that we're part of a robust urban bus network that has 10 garages, 175 direct operated routes, five contract bus routes, of which we are one. Uh, we are still operated by bu Paul Revere Bus Company, but uh, through the MBTA, the buses look like MBTA buses, obviously. So uh, there's many different type of bus routes. Ours what we considered a local bus route. Um, total over 450,000 daily riders on the bus, and that is about a third of transit riders in the Boston region are actually on the buses, um, which is fairly low in major cities like London, Mexico City. You actually have over half of people that use public transit are in the buses. That's, we usually think it's the trains, the subways, but oftentimes buses carry far more people and we think, and the MBTA thinks that their buses could carry more people more efficiently and more conveniently if they were to make some key improvements. So just going on to the next slide. Um, as we know here in Winthrop, uh, most of us know we have our two, our two routes, the 712 and the 13. The routes, these routes have been in place uh, several decades. They have not changed. The schedule's not changed. The routes have not changed. However, our community has changed and our population has changed and our travel patterns have changed. So this is a great opportunity to really look, are those routes serving the people today or do we need to make some changes? Are there neighborhoods that are underserved that need uh, that need new stops? Are there stops we could get rid of and could we alter our, our schedules to better serve where and when people are trying to use the bus? Um, next slide shows you uh, Winthrop bus ridership at, at a glance. This comes from data from the M MBTA. Uh, fortunately with the new buses we have, they have what's called automatic passenger counts, APC counters on the bus that give us an exact count of how many people get on the bus every day. And this is from this past fall. Um, it's actually quite impressive. Uh, we have a, over 2,600 trips per day during the week on the Winthrop bus, the two routes combined. And for a community of just, what, 17, 18,000? Just under 18,000. Yeah. And of those people, only 10 to 12,000 are actually in the workforce. That's a very, that's very high ridership, especially for a service that hasn't really had a lot of attention in recent decades. So we think there's plenty of room for improvement, um, starting from what is already very high ridership. Um, next slide, I think I, 
went over a little bit of the bus, Better Bus Project. Basically, this is a goal for the, the MBHTA to better understand and analyze where their bus service is not meeting their own standards. So this past year, they set what's called a service delivery policy, sort of setting the bar for how the MBTA wants to serve the region. And the Better Bus Project is their way of analyzing service to see, are we doing a good job? Um, to evaluate their own service, to identify how to make changes to better serve the customers, to do outreach to communities and riders, and then develop plans and recommendations, and believe it or not, to begin to implement some of those changes uh, this very cal calendar year. Um, just going on to the next slide with the service delivery policy. I know this is sort of wonky language, but really looks at four key elements of what makes good bus service. Reliability, frequency, span of service, and comfort. So these are all very big factors in determining why and if a person chooses to take the bus. And for those people that don't have a choice, making sure that it is a good experience for them. Um, over a third of the people, uh, the trips on the MBTA are taken on the bus. So real opportunity to make a big difference in a lot of people's lives, uh, system-wide and, and here in Winthrop. That reliability number is kind of stark, huh? Of the of 141 regular routes, 128 are below their target. Yes, That's a good observation. Um, already it is clear that the T is not meeting its own targets and they are well aware of this as are most of us who have uh, taken any of the buses in the system. So there's, it's, it's great that we're at the point of confronting these shortcomings and then analyzing the ways that, that we can meet and even ex exceed that service delivery policy. So how they, um, the next slide sort of shows ways of doing, improving that bus service. The MBTA can only do so much. Um, they have the buses. They can move bus stops, signs, management, schedules, the fare and payment structure. Um, one very exciting thing that we had was um, the use of the Charlie card system, which that the Winthrop buses have never been on. So that was a big improvement for us with our new buses that were part of the regional fare system. That's something that the T was able to help us out with. Hey, do we know if they've seen any uptick in ridership since we went to That the is a good question, and I've been waiting for the passenger counts since then. Okay. Yes. And, um, I would love to see that, that since the new, the new buses were in place when we did the counts, it, which was unfortunately impossible to compare to before because right. the buses didn't have APC counters. Right. There was really no way to know how many people were riding the bus. So we're in a much better position to analyze our ridership and it would be great to see if the Charlie cars have improved, have increased our riderships. So the T wants us to know that there's only so much they can do. There's a lot that municipalities can help with, um, you know, improving our streets, changing our signals so they prioritize buses, um, changing parking conditions so the buses get around easier, sidewalk space, intersections, um, with the present complete streets policy, which is very helpful for improving um, the experience of the buses and bus riders. So the next slide talks a little bit about the partnerships, um, how to really, the goal of this is improving bus speed and reliability. Um, I think I mentioned already that the tools, re, are there places that we can relocate stops, consolidate stops, um, a little infrastructure things, which there can be funding for uh, bus bulbs so that the bus doesn't have to pull in and out of traffic. Uh, we're lucky in Winthrop, we don't have more than two lane roads, so there's really nowhere where the bus is going to be having to weave in and out of traffic, but just making, uh, making space for people to board more easily can make a big difference. Um, and queue jump lanes, treads and signal priority, these are all things that are happening around the region um, to make be buses better and we have an opportunity to get in on that action. Well, have you had any discussion yet with them around uh, signalization uh, priorities for, for buses in particular? Our routes st stick mostly to the main roads mm -hmm. where we have our, what, five street lights in town? Right. So if the, I, there's only five street lights, so mm -hmm. you're not gonna see the type of improvement you might in Cambridge, but mm -hmm. we could definitely see some improvement, hopefully. Absolutely, we can take advantage of technology. Uh, transit signal priority, otherwise known as TSP, is actually something that, that the MBTA is looking at a lot around the system, and this is essentially programming our traffic lights to speak to the bus and to, to know if there is a bus coming, to stay green a little longer, to let that bus just get through the intersection. Just And um, ideally there's what's called a queue jump lane, which is usually a right turn lane, so the bus can hop into that lane and get through the intersection. And what that's really doing is not just getting that bus out of traffic, but prioritizing the you know, 40, 50 people in that bus uh, for making that choice and getting that massive amount of people where, they're ne where they need to go. And that's absolutely something that we could have a voice in through the Better Bus Project. So yes, we want TSP. Yeah. 
Um, and that's, that's something that T has funding for. And the more they know that communities are interested, like what Joe just said, the more we have a chance of benefiting from that. Um, so I think I already went in, into some of the service changes, operational changes, um, getting more funding. So what, the outcome of the Better Bus Project is going to be the T coming out with these recommendations of here's what we can do with our existing funding and here's what we can do if we have more funding. Um, and some of those benefits would be everything from very basic benefits of simply buses showing up when they're supposed to. Um, at least now we have you know, the next bus and open MBTI apps where we can use our smartphone or, smartphone or computer to check where exactly is the bus. But it's always great if it actually shows up when it says it's going to. Um, getting people to work faster, having less crowding, making it a better experience to be on the bus. Making the routes more easy to understand, more user friendly. Um, and having more public resources that are spent efficiently. So the big, um, the big opportunity here is the online and in-person feedback form. Right. The MBTA has a very user-friendly website, uh, mbta.com slash betterbus, where you can just log on and uh, enter your feedback and experience. And they also have regional meetings, uh, people on the streets. Unfortunately, none of these meetings are happening in Winthrop. The, the closest is in Lynn next Wednesday, but also in Somerville on Thursday. Um, oh, going to the next slide, I have a listing of, uh, of that schedule. Some, uh, one of those meetings is actually tonight, where you can come and participate uh, directly in these listening sessions. But uh, the Transportation Advisory Committee has decided that for our next monthly meeting next Wednesday, we, we would like to host our own listening session and open it up to you as Winthrop residents to come to us directly, share your experiences, share your ideas, tell us what is it like for you as a bus rider or what, what would need to happen for you to become a bus rider. Um, and we'll have you know paper on the wall, just this will be very interactive, um, brainstorming, tell us what's working for you and what's not working. And we as a committee will take that information as a cohesive Winthrop wish list, if you will, and bring it to the Better Bus Project meeting um, the next day um, in Somerville. So please join us um, on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock in Winthrop Town Hall. All are welcome um, and uh, we hope to see you there. So some of the questions we'll be going over just to wrap up this portion of our presentation, uh, some of the questions the T wants your input, these are some of the questions we'll be considering. You know, what are they, looking really system wide, um, a lot of people in Winthrop take the bus not just to get in and out of Winthrop but throughout the region. So looking at uh, what's effective, what's not, are there particular geographic areas where it needs to be improved, <laughs> Winthrop, um, and uh, you know, anything that you have to say. So it's, it's really a once in, um, I would hesitate to say once in a lifetime, but certainly once in my lifetime so far opportunity to shape bus service in a community. Well, if it could go back to what you had talked about before as far as changing the routes, I know there has been discussion around uh, both with your committee and in some other groups about maybe trying to get the T to change the routes so that they serve the center a little bit mm -hmm. more. Um, is this a, a good opportunity for people to kind of chime in if that's the type of thing they want to see? I mean, when you look at the bus route maps, you see that 712 doesn't, Route 712 doesn't serve the center at all. If you want to get to the center from Route 712, you have to get off at uh, Main Street near uh, Walden and then walk up the street mm -hmm. or wait for the 713 bus to come by. Yeah. So, um, you know, if people are interested in that kind of service and being able to get folks from the Highland side of town over to the center, you know, we need to let the T know that that's something that the, that the residents want, that the, bike, that the bus riders want. Absolutely, absolutely. The, the current routes do not, are not responsive to current development patterns, to current travel patterns. And uh, we all know there's a lot of emphasis on the center right now, how that's going to develop. And uh, it's so important to make sure that transit serves that area so that it's, it's easily accessible and that we have absolutely. options. Um, so that's definitely a big one. And the Highlands, this has come, a lot f come up a lot for us that at some of our highest um, transit dependent populations live in the Highlands. A lot of seniors are there that aren't able to drive that would love a, a, a quick and easy transit connection um, to the T and that which also begs the question why do we only go to Orion Heights? What about Beachmont? The whole Highlands is so close to Beachmont yet so far away we have to go all the way they have to go all the way through town on the bus. So these are things that have come up a lot for us as a transportation committee and we really hope that um, we can collect that feedback and bring it to the T. This is this is the time to do it. So if you've been withholding your your complaints or your ideas for how to make bus service better, now now is the time to do that through the Better Bus Project. Absolutely, great. Yeah, so uh, we hope to see everyone on Wednesday. And um, another big exciting thing that's happening, not just buses, but bikes. Um, when our committee was formed, it was made very clear to us that the town also very much wanted to 
increase access to biking as a, as a, a very a conven convenient, safe, and reliable transportation choice. I met with Joe very early on, and he was telling me about their conversations uh, to try to get Hubway into town and other companies like Zagster, and it just we hadn't quite found the right fit because we're a small community. We don't have the resources that Boston and other bitties, bigger cities have. Right. Yeah, certainly the um, you know the the look at trying to figure out how people get around Winthrop and uh, get to the places that they want to be, uh, whether it's getting to the beach or to the center or you know the the ferry for those who use it or back or from the ferry to the center. Um, the town had been investigating ways to try to bring bike share as an option for people uh, going back as far as 2015, I believe. Uh, we had conversations with the people who were running Hubway at the time. Uh, that company has changed. But we had conversations with them, and the buy-in was $60,000 for a station with 10 bikes. Well, we didn't have $60,000, and we didn't think that most people in town wanted us to spend their money in that way. So uh, we kept looking for other options. We had talked to another company that was, again, uh, there was going to be a charge up front, uh, a company called Zagster, which is doing a great job with bike share in Salem. Universities, yeah, Salem and State. Sa and it's in, in mm -hmm. the city, city of Salem as well. Yeah. Um, but um, again, they, they had a buy-in. It was much lower, um, but it was still a buy-in. And uh, while we were chewing on that and trying to figure out how we could afford it, um, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council last summer uh, opined that they had had interest from a number of different municipalities around Greater Boston that wanted to pursue um, dockless bike share. So without the docking stations like the Hubway system in Boston, mm -hmm. these are the bikes that you saw per perhaps in Revere last year or driving around the region into Malden. You would have seen, the at the time, it was yellow OFO yeah, bikes. Yeah, we actually have a great slide <laughs> that shows you exactly what dockless bikes look like. Uh, so there's obviously a number, number of different companies, as this uh, slide shows you, operating in this space as a, a dockless bike provider. And what the municipalities uh, and MAPC decided to do last fall was to go out and do a regional procurement. Uh, this would be a process to vet the different bike share companies, figure out which ones would be most likely to succeed, and give them an opportunity to perform on a level playing field in our communities. The other thing it did, it, was, it provides us some comfort that we'll have contact with the companies who are operating in our cities, and they've agreed, or they will be agreeing, to operate under a set of, of guidelines and rules that we've helped establish for them. So instead of what happened in Revere last year with their pilot project, OFO just came in overnight and dumped 500 bikes on the street and they were everywhere and everybody was talking about them. And they ended up in Winthrop. And they wound up in Winthrop and they wound up in Chelsea and Everett and everywhere else and they wound up on people's lawns and in driveways and there were lots of horror stories about how badly that went. The idea here was to get in front of that and not let that kind of uh, situation evolve in town and um, by doing a regional procurement with the other communities around us, we're ensuring that we'll be working with the same vendors as our, our neighbors are. And uh, if we have a problem, the bikes aren't where they're supposed to be or somebody misused a bike, we can call the owners of the bike share company and they can, they can address the situation for us. On the flip side, the service comes at no cost to the town. The town does not have to pay any upfront charges. This is all uh, free of charge. In fact, the agreements do allow for us to charge a very nominal fee per month uh, per bike. Uh, that's still being negotiated, so I won't say what that is, but the town will take that money and put it into a fund that will be used to help uh, improve bike infrastructure. We can buy bike racks or signage or do different things to help make oh, biking around Winthrop a little bit easier and safer, um, and safer for everybody. Mm -hmm. So we're working on all those things. The uh, two companies that were chosen in the regional procurement process, I don't know, we have another slide. Um, yeah, I just wanted to just back up really quick yeah. to actually define, um, if you can just go back to the slide, uh, what what makes dockless bike share different from uh, docked bike share, which we're mostly familiar with, is that literally they do not have to be parked anywhere in particular. They can be left in the street, uh, you found you find the bike, uh, you can go to the, ne the next slide, it shows how they're parked, they're unlocked uh, by using your smartphone and they lock themselves when you're done. So when you, you scan the back of the bike and it goes ding, 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 makes a little, a little happy dance song and you hop on the bike, it charges your credit card. Uh, $1 per half an hour, I believe, is the rates we're having with Lime Bike until you get where you want to go. And you simply hop off and it locks itself. Um, so it opens up the mobility options astronomically of where you can go and if you want to find where the bikes are because they're not necessarily in any particular location until the, the company comes and circulates them throughout town. Uh, you simply look at your phone at the app and it will show you because they're all GPS located. Um, they'll show you where they are in town. That, that's a great slide. Yeah. So on the flip side of that, if somebody thinks they're going to be smart and just take one home and leave it in their backyard, um, unfortunately the company is going to know that it's there and they'll just come and, come and pick it up. Um, 
every day the companies who are operating these, these uh, dockless bikes will be coming to all the towns as part of this regional consortium and making, sh making sure the bikes are recirculated throughout town right. in uh, designated areas. Right. So the, uh, the other thing is the bike companies are, are more than willing to work with us on things like education of their riders, their users. Um, they'll, be, uh, they'll, they'll be handing out and we'll be helping them hand out uh, information to everybody on how to properly pike a, park a bike out of the public way if, where they're unobtrusive. So you pick up your bike at one of the hot spots in town in the morning, you take it to wherever you want to go, then you decide you don't need the bike, it stays there parked appropriately. If it isn't parked appropriately, the uh, the bike share company knows who you are, <laughs> who you are, who left the bike in that manner, and they can send you reminders about uh, parking properly and things like that. Um, you know, they've been the two companies are Spin Bike and Line Bike um, that have agreed to work uh, in this in this format, and uh, so far we've been pleased with them. They've got contracts. Uh, that they're reviewing and hopefully we'll be signing shortly and we're hoping for uh, a launch here at the beginning part of the summer. So yeah. um, We have a couple slides that just show what Joe already told you about which is the, the, the MAPC regional consortium. We can kind of um, yeah. just skip right. through that. He did a great job and then the next slide shows how many communities are, are in on this and I put in bold the really ourselves obviously and our neighbors and um, why it was so right. important to think about bike share as a regional system because Absolutely. our travel patterns don't stop at our borders. No. Most of us leave Winthrop um, on fairly a daily frequently, basis. <laughs> on a daily and basis. now we'll have the option to do that by bike, but maybe to not to be committed to returning that bike because if you wanted to ride to your beach, you could do that, and then you could get an Uber back or a walk back, or right. you know, it just it gives you that that choice for how you want to get around town by the trip. And it's you know, it's a, a it can be a little bit more enjoyable form of transit if you're not in too much of a hurry. Uh, uh, more enjoyable form of transportation, I should say, not transit, and um, and it's something that you know the activity itself is a little healthier and helps people uh, embrace a healthier lifestyle. Yeah, I know. I, I tend to focus so much on uh, biking as a, a transportation mode, but really, it's fun and it's good for your health. And just having these bikes around town, say it's a beautiful day, you want to go for a bike ride, but your bike's been in the basement for ten years, it's all dusty. Well, you right. know what? There's a line bike just down the street. You can hop on it and take a ride to the beach or out to the ferry. Uh, we'll be sure to have lots of bikes yep. staged there, which is fantastic, not just for Win Winthrop residents, but also for <coughs> tourists. And yeah. people who take the ferry to Winthrop will get off and suddenly have an immediate biking connection to go wherever they want throughout town um, or even outside of town. So it really opens up uh, opportun economic opportunities, health opportunities, and uh, leisure opportunities for everybody. And the, the landing will be one of the one of the twenty or so hot spots that we've ident that we're identifying in the contract. So there'll be bikes every morning and every night at the at the hot spots. And during the course of the day, that might move around. Mm -hmm. And the bike share companies have rules about if a bike doesn't move from a particular area mm -hmm. uh, in three or four days, they'll move it them they'll move it somewhere where to a higher traffic area. Obviously, the bike share companies want the bikes to be used. They don't want them to be in the back neighborhoods and people's backyards where they can't be used. So. Right. Um, you know, and, and uh, they'll provide hot, hot lines. So if, they, if we see that there's a, a problem with one of their bikes or a bike is damaged or someplace where it shouldn't be, we notify the company, they'll come out and take care of it right away. So. Absolutely, yeah. And so just going, uh, we have a slide here about, you know, really what's, what's next for Winthrop. Well, this is just some of what we already talked about, what bike share can offer. And uh, for us in Winthrop, we do have a, a textbook last mile, what's called the first mile, last mile gap from both transit stations. So it really provides another connection for how, to get there. I've talked a lot about buses and we love buses, but the buses are crowded and sometimes they're not on time. We hope they will soon be on time and one run very well, but if it's a beautiful day, you want to ride a bike. So this just gives you that many more options for how to bridge that last mile gap um, and help us achieve what's called mode shift. So what's next for Winthrop? Um, as Joe said, we're working on these staging areas, looking at w where where would be designated places around town where it would be good to make sure there are always bikes and where the companies come each day to sort of recirculate them. Uh, hot spots is the word. Uh, he mentioned the public education and that we're hoping to see this program rolled out this very summer. Yeah. Yeah, um, as I said earlier, the contracts are in the hands of the bike share companies. They'll probably have some edits or comments or things they want to make minor adjustments to. We're open to that. Uh, we'd like to have them get that to us by next week, uh, settle on the final terms of the contract, and, and we'll sign. And then we'll be able to announce what the launch date is. So look, look for the town manager's blog and the town website, announcements mm -hmm. in WCAT. Uh, through Julia's Facebook posts, yeah, yeah. and uh, we'll get the word out when uh, when uh, 
spin bike and uh, line bike will be coming yeah. in town. Yeah, we're hoping to have a few of them out um, for display at the Holiday Festival in a few weeks right. on June 12th at the ferry landing yep. to show how fun it is to grab a bike uh, as part of, you know, as it's really part of what makes the ferry successful is that there's a biking connection. Yeah, so absolutely. we hope to have some demo bikes there. Uh, bike Winthrop will be there leading a ride. So um, I don't think the bikes will be available for riding just yet. Maybe yeah, no, not. I don't know. Um, yeah, we, we have reached out to both bike share companies. One of them had indicated that they wanted to participate, but they haven't committed yet. And the other one I hasn't said anything one way or the other. Uh, I think that most likely, unless they have uh, are under contract, they probably won't bring enough bikes to let people try them out. But they'll have a, a couple bikes there with a, a rep so that they can show you how to unlock the bike, how to how to get enrolled in the in, in uh, download the app and things like that. So yeah, um, absolutely. So exciting stuff, um, lots to look forward to. Um, you know, we tend to focus on some of the problems in town and our, the challenges that we're facing, but these are really fantastic opportunities and things to be excited about. So I'm um, grateful for Joe for joining Thank me you. today to me. Yep. share this information with you all in a, a public uh, viewing setting. Sometimes we get tired of reading emails and we're not all on Facebook, so let's Let's turn on the TV. So thank you to WCAT for this opportunity, and we hope to see you at our Transportation Committee meeting next Wednesday. Um, or feel free to get in touch with either of us Absolutely. Um, to ask us any questions. See you on the bus and uh, on the roads.